Guys, look at those freaking arms. They're so chunky. Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about the 100 day anniversary as well as all of the different characters that have been uh, not really released, but announced at least. Because for all of the upcoming characters, we've got like a five star and two six stars. We've got Revy, we've got Graham and Allura. Tour Dog have actually released all of the skills, and so we can do a little quick evaluation. However, Today, what I really want to focus on is celebrating this 100 day anniversary with Alchemy Stars. On top of that, we'll also be having a look at the 100 day anniversary gifts. Um, I can't find it right now, but like we'll find it very soon. And so that is the agenda. To oh, there it is. So that is the agenda today. And so let's just jump right into it. So first of all, we've got the 100 day anniversary gifts. So it's thanks to your support, Alchemy Stars has been live for 100 days. And so with that, thank you guys so much for following me along for the Alchemy Stars journey. It's been a pretty good ride. I think that this is probably my favorite game of the year let's put it that way but anyway let's move on so from the global launch on 17th of june oh my god it really has been 100 days huh la di da di da i will let you guys read it it is as always in the description below but like let's jump right into the rewards there's a lot of thank yous more thank yous over here and so here we are a 100 day commemorative gift so now this is really interesting because i actually made some predictions about this one and i was kind of right and kind of not right so what we will be getting is a thousand loom amber and so so what I guessed was 3,000 Loom Amber. 3,000 Loom Amber, yeah, it was actually quite a fair bit. Uh, I'm not too mad. I, I'm actually not mad at all that we're getting only 1,000 Loom Amber. I think for a celebratory gift for a 100 day anniversary, 1K Loom Amber, I'll take it. I think it's great. All right, moving on. We're also getting the Prism, Nitium, Jasper, Colossus, Patch, Hearthstones, and Limited Edition Avatar and Furniture. I called this one. I called the Avatar. I did not think that we were going to get some furniture, but that's all really cool because they went above and beyond. So thank you, Tour Dog, for putting out this freaking sick game. And congratulations for hitting 100 days. Here's to 100 years. Maybe, I don't know, I'll be beaming my mind and consciousness into your Alchemy Stars 3. But anyway, with that being said, hopefully you guys are happy with the gifts. I think it's pretty generous especially for a hundred day celebration and so with that being said i'm gonna close this off and head over to these guys over here and it's really nice to actually talk through these because it's kind of like a trip down memory lane the game launched and almost immediately we had an event eye of the storm in eye of the storm we followed eve and Sinsa and how they kind of ended up where they were and so the key statistic that tour dog has shared with us is that eve defeated the fear pain and fury for two million times essentially i think that's actually an indication of the active play is at the time because if i remember correctly fear pain and fury was like the ex stage but to be honest i can't remember 100 percent so correct me if i'm wrong guys all right moving on after eye of the storm we had the hero event and so Oh my god, that's a that's a lot of Dharma dolls. And so in the Cloud Blossom Hotel, we managed to amount up to 1.5 billion Dharma dolls. Moving on, we had the summer break. Mm, vice. This summer event in which we are still playing through, we sold 108 million shaved ices. That is a lot. And honestly, I want to talk a little bit about this one, right? And the reason I want to talk about this one is because I want to ask you guys. Did you enjoy this kind of mini game in Alchemy Stars? Because we already know that the shaved ice stall was not like some of the core features. It's not the core gameplay of Alchemy Stars. But me personally, like I quite like these little, not really cooking mama things. Is it uh, overcooked kind of things? Like where you prepare meals for people and then you throw them out the door. And yeah, I, I, I quite like these mini games. Me personally, it shows me the commitment that Tour Dog have placed into this game. I think that they are willing to go above and beyond and I'm really happy with that. And so yeah, you guys let me know what you thought about the shaved ice was it kind of like a hassle to you or did you really enjoy it as you can see doom fire strike is our upcoming event holy crap it's only been a hundred days and we're about to have our fourth event all right and so what exactly do we know about doom fire strike well we know that it's coming very very soon so for you guys who are not in the loop doom fire strike we have this little promotional image and so as you guys can see it is coming in about six days time and it will last for three weeks on top of that we were introduced to three characters we've got allura over over here and so honestly my first impression of allura was like oh man she's blue she looks like water but really alchemy stars loves to do the switcheroo and then i zoomed in a bit closer so let's like get in real close and i was like man that is freaking lightning sparks she is a thunder unit a thunder sniper 100 percent nope that doesn't seem to be the case nope she turns out to be a freaking water sniper so i got debated all right and so moving on after allura we were revealed revy who is a thunder unit i think revy's thunder alignment is very very obvious like there's freaking sparks everywhere but who knows they could have done the switcheroo and like turn her into a fire unit instead but yeah that is revy and so last we have graham who has some really freaking thick arms 
I think it was pretty obvious that he was going to be fire as well. And so let's have a deeper look into each of these units. So first off, we have Allura here. She is the five stars. And so I suspect that she is going to be the welfare unit. They do tell us that she is a water sniper. However, the... The lightning, the lightning guys. I'm willing to bet, I don't know what I'm willing to bet, but I'm willing to bet that she is gonna have a secondary element of lightning. Otherwise, Tour Dog, you have successfully double jabated me. Or really, maybe I just jabated myself a little bit. All right, quick evaluation. So she is a water sniper, five stars, and so she is kind of competing for the slot of uh, vices. But not only that, we've got the six star snipers like Fleur and Connolly. And so just quickly reading through her active skill, 200% damage to 16 tiles in a radial shape. So that's like the, the one that that spreads out everywhere. However, what's cool about this is that it is centered on one selected tile. So this sounds like it's gonna be map wide selection. Now next we've got damage dealt to so the selected tile ignores defense. That, that, that is actually pretty good. But I think that of the 16 or 17 tiles that are actually gonna do damage, only the one that is selected is going to ignore defense. And so that's really cool because it makes her a sniper, but also like kind of a detonator because she's got that one cell ignore defense attack. And on top of that, it also does AOE damage. All right, so moving on from that, clears damage tile effects from tiles in this span. Now, this is really interesting wording because I don't think we've seen something like this before. And if I was to guess what this was, I think it's referring to like, like when those bugs leave the spikes in the ground or when the tiles like catch on fire. And so I reckon that this effect is actually going to clear away those like tile effects. Now, whether this is gonna work on like locked tiles or other kinds of tiles, I don't know. But if I was to guess, I would say, yeah, I would say that it's gonna work on locked tiles. But that one is a completely unfounded guess. It's not even an educated guess. It's just me making a bet again. And so moving on, when blessing reaches 10 stacks, active skill range becomes a maximum radial shape span. And so all it means is that like star shape thing is just going to go all the way to the end of the board. However, what is interesting about this is that there is no description anywhere that mentions how we get these blessing stacks. And so I guess we just have to keep an eye out for how we actually build them. However, my own theory is that we'll probably build them either on like auto attacks or executing chain combos or using active skills. In my opinion, it's going to be on autos and chain combos and not active skills. When blessing reaches 10 stacks, like 10 stacks, it sounds like if you hit things 10 times or like if you use chain combos, stuff like that. I think it's a pretty reasonable number to get it from 16 tiles to a maximum radial shape span. All right. And so that is the active skill. So moving on, let's have a look at the chain combo, which is simply sniping people within three clusters. I think this is fine. This is very, very standard, especially for a sniper. And so lastly, can obtain blessing. <laughs> Oh, uh, what does that even freaking mean? All right, so each blessing stack increases Allura's active skill damage by 10%. Okay, wait, holy crap. Wait, that's actually really, really freaking big. Because what this means is that at max stacks, it is going to increase her disillusioned active skill by 100%. Wow, that's uh, that, that seems pretty freaking good. And on top of that, the selected tile ignores defense. Um, Okay, this, this could actually end up being pretty cracked. But yeah, that is Allura in a nutshell. Hopefully we will be getting her in the, uh, join the event for the chance to add her to your lineup. I think that wording pretty much implies that she is the welfare unit. Okay, and so with that being said, let's move on to the next one, who is going to be a Revy. And so Revy, detonator, she is going to be competing with like your Michaels, your Tesses, and units like that, right? And so what we are going to start off with is Thunder Roar, which is the active skill. Select one of the four directions around the unit. This is working very, very similarly like senses right now and then launches three thunder waves forward in a three column range so that's like it's like a kind of like a big laser beam kind of thing and this deals 250 damage so moving on after each thunder wave hits a target subsequent thunder wave damage is reduced by 20 percent can hit up to five times okay so I think that can hit up to five times as well as the damage reduction. I think this is just to like nerf it against bosses because if you can launch three times in a three column range for 250% damage, for some bosses, especially like the multi-tile bosses, they're gonna be getting hit for quite a lot of damage. And so I think that ending over there is how they're gonna regulate it. Otherwise, moving on, we've got the chain combo vault, which is 135% damage to three columns. That one's on the nine chain, but that's kind of where the breakpoint is. And so this sounds like a, a lot like the Uriel, a lot like the Raphael and the Gabriel, but the other way. Me personally, I'm not a massive fan of these column ones because the columns, whilst they do have a lot of range, the cost for them to get that range is actually quite immense. So I'm talking like to get the three columns, you need at least a nine chain combo. However, if your playstyle is kind of like setting up burst or like 15 chain combos anyway, like that probably doesn't really matter. And generally speaking, both the chain combo and the active skill, they kind of make her look like a, 
really like a laser from far away. Like she's going to be hitting enemies from the other side of the freaking map. And so I, I don't think we have that kind of archetype right now. It doesn't exactly clash with like Michael's or Tessa's. Like Michael's is like dashing around the teleport and then like the HP percentage damage. And so what Revy sounds like right now is kind of like a, a really safe detonator hit from a far kind, you know? And so moving on, can stack Dauntless Heart. Each stack of Dauntless Heart increases Revy's basic attack by 0.6% and active damage by 5%. Oh lord. Oh my god, wait, there's more. Normal attacks can hit diagonally. Okay. Okay, I think this is our first diagonal attacker for Thunder. And this is really interesting because on Reddit, I was just reading, oh man, Fire's archetype is that they have the diagonal attackers. I think this is a pretty good equipment skill, especially for like a damage dealer. The first thing that I noticed is that we don't know how to stack Dauntless Heart and we do have the same problem as Allura, so keep your eyes out, but the thing that I noticed the most is that there doesn't seem to be a cap on Dauntless Heart. So what I am wondering, especially with the active skill damage by 5% and the stacks, could this be Tessa 2.0? Depending on how we stack Dauntless Heart, wait a second. Wait a second, Tessa's active, or rather Tessa's equipment thing, where she uses the stacks to boost her skill damage, it actually expends stacks. As far as I can see over here, she is not expending stacks anywhere, so this could be infinitely stacking. Again guys, all of this is highly theoretical, just some like first impressions with just looking at the skills. But Revy looks like she is going to be a powerhouse, of course, depending on her stats as well. But generally speaking, detonators are going to have like really high attack unless they're hero, like so with some built-in passives. We actually might see the hero treatment for Revy where she has like low attack but because of like this stuff over here she is going to be still pretty busted. Anyways that's my thoughts on Revy and so let's move on to the last person which is Graham who was only released 36 minutes ago. And so Graham another fire detonator that's actually our like what fourth fire detonator? We have a teleport within 12 surrounding tiles. Wait why does that sound like it's a teleport that's better than Smokey's? Okay, let me finish this. Teleports to any tile within 12 surrounding tiles in a diamond shape, so it's probably like that. Dealing 180% damage to 20 surrounding tiles at the target location. That sounds pretty freaking good, but the next part sounds a little bit gimmicky. Deals 1.5% damage to the outer cluster. I'm not sure that I like that. Now, this next part is a little bit interesting. If the active skill was ready in the last round, the teleport range in this round becomes two surrounding clusters. Hmm. Hmm, okay, okay. This is this is a really interesting skill. The first weakness that I see is the fact that this deals 1.5 times damage to the outer cluster. And the reason that this is interesting is because it makes your positionals a little bit more complex. And what I mean by that is that generally speaking, when you go like use your teleports or whatever, so I'm thinking like Sharona, I'm thinking uh, Smokey. When you use them, typically speaking, especially because they are surrounding your own unit, you want to get as close to the target as possible, right? However, with this gimmick where you you deal 1.5 times damage to the outer cluster, you might not always want to go like straight up against the mob. I can see a lot of scenarios where you still do because like that 1.5 times the outer cluster might be like the edge of that other mob. But yeah, this extra bit of bonus damage could be a little bit tricky to utilize. On the other hand, however, the fact that he has a teleport and he's a detonator, he's kind of like Michael to me. Kind of like Michael, kind of like Sharona, kind of like Midgard. I think that teleport alone as well as like the big detonation already makes him like a top tier detonator. As most of you already know, I'm a massive fan of the units that kind of have like a main role, like a detonator, and then some like sub utility. In this case, it's Graham with his teleport. Others include like Charon with his resets as well as the displacement, Michael with his global dash, Sharona with her global dash, Midgard with her short range dash, Carleen with the global teleport, Phyllisha with the global teleport. I think that these units are like top tier units. And so it's for this reason that I think that Graham is also going to be a top tier unit. However, with that being said, let's move on to the chain combos and the equipment skills to really solidify our thoughts. And so what we have here is a two chain combo to eight tiles in a cross shape. I believe that's identical to Sharona. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we've got a diamond shape and then a radial shape. So it's it's okay. It's so so. It's decent. And then moving on, we've got Raging Tiger. So can accumulate fury. Each stack of fury increases Graham's basic attack by 0.5%, and there is no limit to how much fury can be gained from his active skill. Okay, that's a uh, that's that's pretty freaking good. However, this effect will be cleared at the end of each wave. Okay. And then on top of that, for each stack cleared, Graham will recover for an amount equal to 5% of his max HP. 
Okay. Now we're starting to get into like the pseudo healer utility, which is really interesting. But not only that, he is also gaining attack and it's saying that there is no limit to his fury as well. And it's saying that the fury is gained from his active skill. So I suspect that his fury is generated by the amount of cells that he hits enemies with or with his active skill. That's just like kind of the first thing that comes to mind. Obviously it could be wrong. This is completely baseless speculation. But yeah, so he's got kind of like a pseudo heal. He's got a teleport and he's got some attack stacking buff. I think this guy's gonna be pretty good. I think he is gonna be very, very good. However, I don't know if you can call him irreplaceable. And the reason is because we see Smokey and we see that although she is a converter and does less damage, she kind of does the same thing, but she also converts, right? Or rather resets. Yes, I know Smokey's teleport range is pretty crap, but like she is, yeah, she is kind of doing what Graham is doing as well. And if it were up to me, I would run two detonators and like two converters and a healer or like three converters. And so Graham could definitely be one of those detonators, right? And so in that case, you could actually have two teleports. And then if you throw in a Phyllishite as your healer, that's three teleports. That's a, I think that's a new goal for me, guys. I think I'm going to try run a mono five teleport team one day. Hmm interesting times my guys but yeah that's my thoughts on Graham he is looking like a pretty competitive unit right now I think all three of these characters do look like extremely competitive units so I don't know if I'm gonna pull for them actually you know what I know the answer I am not gonna pull for them Graham is not a waifu I'm not overly into Revy and Aurora no sorry Allura is well she's welfare for me personally I think they are all very very strong but I don't think they are irreplaceable and what I mean by that is like for example you can't really replace is Karam because he has like the displacement skill. You can't really replace like cross converters or converters. There are just like a lot of skills or like skill combinations that already kind of exist here. And so yeah, to me personally, just looking at it, they, they could actually turn out to be broken and trivialize all content. But in my opinion, I think you could actually live without them. And so yeah, that's kind of it for this unit analysis. And so I want to end this video on this guy over here. So don't forget to retweet both tweets above because if we do and we get two retweets we're going to be getting another 300 lumamba so do it for the boys my boys all right and so that is obviously going to lead us into the secret question you guys hyped you guys hyped for this new event we've had like so many events almost back to back are you guys getting burnt out or are you guys freaking hyped for dune fire strike on top of that what do you guys think about each of these characters allura revy and Graham? and finally how do you guys feel about the 100 day commemorative gift and so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and i would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video and so thank you guys so much but otherwise please consider a like a sub a follow and if you would like to support the channel we have some affiliate links as well as a membership thing down in the description but otherwise as Revy once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye